times gone by, saving seed was the main way growers obtained plants for the next season, keeping what they needed for the following year and swapping the rest. These days seed is cheaply and widely available from many suppliers, but there are still good reasons to save your own. It's the best way to perpetuate rare heritage or heirloom varieties which have been passed down through generations. Preserving the seed ensures they are there for future and helps maintain genetic diversity. Varieties can subtly evolve over time to become better suited to your unique local growing conditions. It's natural selection in action, and while you may not have a unique strain after one or two years, locally saved seed can, over a few decades, become a unique variety. It can be very rewarding to learn how to successfully grow plants through to maturity, harvest and store the seed, and then use it to grow them again in subsequent years. And finally, saving seed can save you money. Many crops produce lots of viable seed, which just takes your time to collect, clean, dry and store. Some vegetables produce seeds more easily than others and are more likely to produce good yields. Plants which are easy to collect seed from include beans, peas, tomatoes, peppers and chilies. Seeds from biennial crops that take two seasons to produce seeds, such as carrots, onions or beetroot, are harder to save because you need to keep the plants in optimum conditions for two years. However, leaving some in the ground to flower the following year can be a successful early source of pollen for beneficial insects, as well as helping you to save seed. Other plants such as squash and melons readily pollinate with other types grown in the area, and won't always produce reliable saved seed unless you take measures to prevent insect pollination and pollinate by hand, so most home gardeners don't bother saving these seeds. It's also not worth saving seeds from plants which were grown from F1 hybrid seeds, F1 hybrid varieties are commercially produced seeds that combine certain traits of two parent plants, such as resistance to disease, pests or bolting, or a tendency to produce heavy yields. For example, carrot resistor fly and many common sweet corn varieties are F1 hybrids. Some saved seed from F1 varieties will be infertile and some will produce different traits from the original parents that are less favourable to the ones which you originally bought. Check the seed packets for an F1 mark if you are unsure. For many plants, the seed is ready for collection when a few start to drop into the soil, nature's way of indicating that the seed is mature. For other plants, you may need to experiment to find the best time. For example, with fruiting plants, the correct time to collect seed from their fruits may be a little later than the time they are ready to eat. Remember to only save seed from the most vigorous plants with the best fruit and avoid using seed from weak or unusual looking plants. In this way, you'll be naturally selecting the traits you wish to encourage in your crops. You might sacrifice a little from your harvest, but you'll gain an interest throughout the fall and winter in seeing flowers and seed pods develop. From the healthiest plants, collect a few ripe fruits free of cracks or bug holes, which can serve as entry points for disease and microorganisms. Wash the fruits well, then slice out the middle portions from each one, which is where the biggest, fattest seeds are found. Put the middle portions into a jar and add some water to cover. Put on the lid and store in a warm place for two to three days. A windowsill in a sunny position will do, giving it a shake a few times a day to loosen the mixture. This will cause the gelatinous sac around the tomato seed to break down through a fermentation process. The sac part contains chemicals which prevent germination. Pour the liquid through a kitchen sieve and rinse with cold water. The fleshy part of the tomato, including the sac, should come away from the seed, leaving you with seeds in the sieve. Repeat this a few times if necessary. Dry the seeds by putting them on a fine mesh or something like a paper plate. If you put them onto paper towels, they tend to stick quite firmly, so it's best to create ready-made planting discs which can be sewn direct into pots next year. Cut circles of paper towel and place a couple of seeds per disc to use when you're planting them out. After a week in a dry place, the seeds should be dry enough to store. Put them in an envelope and be sure to label them with a date and variety. The tomato method also works well for other seeds extracted from fruit. For other seeds, using coarse sieves can help separate the seed from the surrounding plant material. Whatever method you use, it's important that all seeds are dried out thoroughly before storage and then kept in airtight containers, which are mice and pest proof in a cool dark place. Prepared correctly from good healthy plants, your seeds should remain viable easily into the next growing season and in some cases for several years. Once you have kept the seed you need, why not offer surplus at a local seed swap event or to friends and family? With any luck, you'll be rewarded with equally cared for seeds which will grow into great plants, starting the whole process again.